let's now have a look at a overview of what World War I was. Now, this is a part of a series of briefings as background to big concepts that I want to do before we get into the more detailed study of Australia's involvement in the First World War. As you go through this particular flip video, remember to focus on your note-taking skills. Concept map out these ideas. Get another page of your OneNote open. Maybe work in a split screen mode. Have your stylus out. Perhaps put World War I in the center and map out the key ideas you, as you work through the video. Let's now look at some of the other names for World War I. If you're doing any reading and study in this term, it's possible you will run across different names for World War I. And this is a little bit of a list of what the main ones are. During World War I itself, it was often called the World War. No one about it, no first in there, just the World War. The term the First World War sort of comes up at this time, but it was being used in a different way we'd mention it. The Americans in a, new, a newspaper in Indianapolis have one of the first mentions of the phrase First World War. And what it was getting at in September 1914 was the idea that it was the first time an entire world was involved in a war. They were drawing upon the idea that this was a war that was influenced by the communications and transport networks of the Industrial Revolution. They weren't talking about first in the sense that there would be a second or a third. They were saying this is a world war truly for the first time. The Great War is a term that also came up around this time, and it's a name that sort of has stuck, great meaning large. The Great War for Civilization was a phrase that came in British newspapers around the time the war was going on. More commonly, you might run across historians using the phrase the 1914-18 war, which kind of gives away when this war was. And other terms that you might even run across include the First All-Europe War or the European War. Sadly, however, there are some people who referred to this as being the war to end all wars or the war to end war, which suggested that this war was so dramatically awful that no other wars would be contemplated after it. That does get at how terrible the war was, but sadly, it didn't end war. World War I, which is the term that I've used here already, is a term that only came into use after the start of World War II in 1939. If you think about it, we wouldn't number things until there were more than one in number. If you only got one thing, it's just the thing. It's not the first thing. Let's now push on to when this war was, and part of the name of the 1914-18 war gives it away. But like all the big questions in history, answers can become complicated. Most of the time we will say 1914 to 1918, but when the war was specifically will vary depending on who you ask and where they live. Generally speaking, here are the common answers. The war started on a range of dates in June, July or August 1914. It's the end of June, June 28, if you happen to live in what's called the Balkan area of Serbia and the southern borders of Austria. For them, it was June 28. Then we have a period called the July Days or July Crisis, obviously in July, in which a number of other nations went to war. These are the nations of Eastern and Central Europe, places like Russia, Hungary, and so on, were drawn into the war. Montenegro, there's a whole stack of countries in there that were drawn into the war at this time. The date that we really want to focus on is August 4th, 1914, when Britain, Australia and the rest of the British Empire, Canada, New Zealand, France and some other nations went to war. But if you're in an American high school, you'd find that you'd be talking about America going to war starting World War I in 1917. The different dates matter to different historians, different students around the time. And so you have to be aware of which ones matter to us the most as Australians. And you need to understand, if you're looking at sources online, why the dates might vary. When did the war end has similar answers. If you happen to be in Russia, they'll talk about the war ending on March 3rd, 1918. For most of us, 
most of the Western world, places like Australia, we talk about it ending at 11 a.m. on the 11th of November, the 11th month of 1918, because that's when the ceasefire that stopped the shooting on the Western Front, which we'll talk about later, took place, what we call armistice, and 11th of November, or 11th of November every year, becomes known as Armistice Day. Armistice meaning ceasefire, stop shooting. Western nations and Germany signed a document known as the Treaty of Versailles on the 28th of June 1919. And this is often considered the official end of World War I. So if you see some war memorials on them with the 1914-19 war written on it, you'll know why that is. So that's an interesting one. But interestingly, even Britain didn't officially put a law through Parliament ending the hostilities of the war until 1920. A few other dates would also include these. If you're in Austria, Bulgaria, Hungary or Turkey, you'll have different dates again. Notice Turkey is as late as August 1924.